All you ever hear now is you need to build a brand on Amazon, and it's true. But how do you go about that? Well, most people have it completely wrong. Building a brand isn't a logo or commercials or all that flashy stuff. It's about much more. It's about driving an emotional connection with the people that buy your products and the things that you sell. But how do you do it? Well, this is the first of a three-part series that we're gonna break down exactly how to build a brand. More specifically, how do you build a visual identity that converts customers, that gets them to click, and that makes them feel something? For this series, I brought in literally the experts in the world. One of the best creative agencies for building e-com brands and e-com listings. People buy things that represent who they are. There's a lot of people copying each other's listings. It's not enough to have a high quality product. I have a brand, I have a logo, I have colors, I'm doing okay. What do they like? What do they not like? Well, I love practical examples. You probably can tell by now. We're gonna kick this first series off with brand identity, but we're gonna get into a lot more. Like how to use 3D renderings, how to build kick-ass listing images, and how do you sculpt that visual path that will make your brand great on Amazon. Let's go. All you hear nowadays, especially in the Amazon FBA space, is you've gotta build a brand in this new era of Amazon to be successful. But that's a nebulous thing, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So what I've done is, is I brought in one of the experts, in my opinion, in the space on how do you actually visually represent a brand? How do you create click-through rates? How do you create conversion? How do you evoke emotion with the visuals of your products and your brand. Now, one of the best in the space, in my opinion, not only creating listings, but also sculpting a brand identity is a group out of Germany with people across the world called Spotlighted. Now, Spotlighted was instrumental in bringing my newest brand, Radio, to life. You guys have seen some of these videos on Radio, and I'm definitely gonna share more in the future. But this is part one of a multi-part series for actually how do you do that? How do you create a brand that matters? How do you tie in visuals that evoke emotion, that convert customers, and that ultimately lead to more success on the Amazon platform. So Jose, really excited to introduce you for this part one of a multi-part series. I'm going to let you uh, give a quick intro to yourself and then we'll dive into the step-by-step -step tutorial presentation that you put together for us. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I prepare a bunch of slides that I think people are going to find very valuable. We're going to drop a lot of knowledge on this presentation and even on the other two ones to come. But for this one, I'm really excited. It's a topic that we don't really talk about in the e-commerce world. Most people go for the most viable option when launching a brand. So showing sellers how to do it properly is definitely my pleasure. Awesome, dude. Well, let's uh, get right into this. I advise people watching this video to grab pen and paper because we're going to drop a lot of valuable stuff in this presentation step by step on how to do the things that we would do with new brands when they come as clients. So be ready. All right. So if you're in this video and you clicked on this, you probably are struggling with a couple things, right? One of those things might be standing out, right? This is probably one of the biggest concerns that sellers have when launching a brand, either on Amazon or other e-commerce platforms. Another problem that you might be having is poor conversion rates. This happens to sellers quite often, and they usually don't know the reason for it. They tend to assume that the problem is rooted in other places where it's not really rooted on. And, and this is one of the reasons that we tackle the information about branding and just brand in general, right? Another problem that you might be having is low profit margins. We're gonna explain how to fix this too in terms of branding and how to connect to your audience. You might be wondering how can I fix all this, right? You're trying to understand what is it that is going wrong with your brand. So let me start by saying that you're not alone. You're not the only seller that is struggling with this kind of stuff. And it's also a fact that Amazon is taking a big shift. There's something happening with Amazon that not a lot of people are understanding or being aware of. First of all, the past year on 2022, Jungle Scout released a uh, market research in which they claim that private labeling is going up by 59%. So that means that drop shipping is going down. There's a lot of people understanding that there's a new strategy on Amazon and it's not only not viable anymore to have just a uh, a simple product from China and then just selling it, bringing it to the warehouse and selling it there for a profit margin. 
but there's some more involved into launching a brand like branding and storytelling, trustworthy sellers that just feel like they're, they're worth buying from there. And also uh, decent quality products. The old Amazon usually is something that that is crowded with sellers that have generic products that just offer you the most minimum viable product that you can find. And also a lot of copycats. It's a lot of people copying each other's listings and they don't really understand what are the opportunities that they have with their brands and what can they do to fix their problems, right? So a lot of people are shifting from just having a simple store to having a brand. Customers now expect that sellers offer them trustworthy brands and also more value for their money. Things like tailored products, cluster clear value on the things that they're purchasing, memorable brands that they can pick up from the search feed and they can recognize them later on when they shop again on Amazon, right? I love this designer that has a super cool quote that always sticks to my head. He says that people don't buy things, they buy into things. Now, what does this mean? This means that people buy things that represent who they are, from the clothes that you wear, from the things that you grab from the shelf at the superstore, this stuff that connects with you and that you prefer apart from other brands that are competitors from that thing that you just purchased, right? Things that have values the same as you do, way of living, beliefs, all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to show you an example that is super practical to show you how this happens in your daily life and things that you don't notice, right? But first we have to tackle the root of those problems that I just mentioned. The root of those problems is the brand. The way that you define the brand, if you're showing differentiated value, if it's something that people believe in, if you release a product out into the public that people can recognize on the shelf or in a search feed, if you're an e-commerce seller, it's definitely important. And that's why we decided to come up with this presentation to not only teach sellers on how to understand branding as a foundational level, but also as a solution to the root problems that they're having right now with their brands. So in this presentation, we're not only going to talk about the basics, what is branding, because you might hear about it a lot in other YouTube videos, or you might even hear about it from other sellers as well, but you can't quite comprehend what brand really is. We're going to talk about also the power of branding, if you should really care about branding at all, and also where to start, because it's also confusing putting steps into making that progress on having a solid brand and telling a story. We're also gonna talk about traditional versus e-commerce branding and what's the difference between the two because they're not the same. For starters, I wanna say who we are. We are a design agency based in Germany. We do product visuals for e-commerce sellers and we focus on 3D. We combine the power of understanding the data, what people like, and what customers look for on a specific product and then modeling your product and utilizing listing design with 3D to uh, come up with the best converting images that we can. We started out as sellers ourselves. So that's why we understand the data from a seller's perspective. That, that's what makes us different from other design agencies. We not only make products or product visuals that look good, but that they also work. We started out as an in-house team and we saw that our service was so good that we had to offer it to other people. So that's how we started. I'm Jose, I'm the design lead and I have seven plus years of experience working in design and I specialize on brand identity, product visuals and creative direction. But enough about us, let's start with the basics and start dropping that value that I have been bragging so much about. Let's take Take a look at this, which is uh, a really funny example, right? We brand ourselves on the daily. Our personal brand is also a brand. We might not see it as one, but I got a couple of examples that might help you realize that you have a brand as well. The way that you present to other people is, is a brand, right? It's, it's the way that you show what you believe in. And that goes from the case that you choose from your phone to the profile picture that you choose for your social media, where it is a plain background, if it's a cool shot with you and wearing some sunglasses, or just a serious shot of yourself, right? We tend to describe ourselves with the things that we pick visually that represent us from that, which I just said, the profile pictures to stickers that we paste on our um, laptop lid, right? So 
how do we define a brand? What does a brand mean? If we can brand ourselves and we can brand businesses, what, what really is a brand, right? The first thing that I can say is that it's not a logo, right? Just having a logo doesn't mean that you have a brand. Branding is having an idea, a clear idea of something that you can share with people and they might replicate that idea in their heads as well. It's something that we shape either with visuals, with copywriting. There's a lot of different techniques on how to shape brands on people's head, but I'm gonna start off with a super clear example so you can understand why branding is not just a logo and a color palette. So let's look at these three examples. We got Supreme, Coca-Cola, and Nike. They all have the same colors, right? So that means that they have a brand already just because they have colors and logo? Not necessarily, right? Let's look at what each of these brands represent in their natural habitat, right? Supreme represents being the coolest dude on the block. If you put a Supreme shirt, you suddenly gain more status among your friends. And why does that happen, right? It's, it's super, super interesting. And when you go to Coca-Cola, all of a sudden you have the same color, but it represents something different. It represents having a great time with your family and friends while you're celebrating holding a Coke in your hand, right? Or Nike, right? It represents achieving your dreams, being inspired. Like when you put a pair of Nikes on, you all of a sudden feels like you trying to accomplish the dreams that you will set for your life, right? Well, how, how can three brands that have the same colors and a logo represent something different? Well, what they have in common is that they all tell a story. And I'm going to teach you how to craft your story in this presentation as well, how to start step-by-step -step defining what you want to represent either with your product visuals, copywriting, the way that you present your product to people in order to achieve a storytelling as strong as this one or similar to the way that they do it. Another thing that I usually hear is, yeah, I have a brand, I have a logo, I have colors, I'm doing okay. And yes, you can do okay with having an okay branding or a bad branding. That doesn't mean you can be successful in, in business, right? But there's a catch. You can only go so far with branding that is not set up in a proper foundation if you're not telling a story, right? And this leads us to telling why is it important to have a brand. And I'm gonna start it off with a super practical example. I love practical examples. You probably can tell by now. But yet this guy, Rob Walker is a journalist and this guy made a super interesting experiment. He went off and bought 200 items, random items, right? He bought a plastic banana, a hotel key card and a bunch of different crap, right? He just bought the most random items you can ever find, things that people might not be thinking of buying when going on a platform or, or an e-commerce platform, whatever it is. He bought it for an average of $1.25 he spent a total of $197. So what this dude did, he went to e-commerce, specifically eBay, and put on sale all those 200 items, right? And he made $8,000 in total revenue. Now, this is crazy. How can you go from $197 to a total of $8,000 in revenue? How can you do that? It's approximately 6,300% markup. The thing that he did, which is super interesting, is that he hired 200 writers, professional writers, to write a product description for each of those random items, so the plastic banana for the hotel key card. And he told amazing stories about the origin of those items. Some of those items were worth near to a dollar, and he ended up selling them for $62, it's insane. So what does this tell you? Stories are powerful. People were so drawn to the stories about these products or these random items that they just ended up purchasing them because they wanted to have them in their house or be in possession of them because the story was so rich that it, it was interesting for them enough to spend that much amount of money on an item that was so random to them, right? So let's go back to the example of Supreme, Coca-Cola, and Nike. What do they have in common too? Well, they do the same thing. They tell a story, right? They, they tell a story that is powerful enough to make a $20 t-shirt be worth $700. Now, I'm not saying that with the story, you can achieve this level of difference between prices, but you can get somewhere near to a markup like this, right? Stories are powerful enough to make you 
rise your value in the market just by having a story that connects with people. So where do we start crafting a story that is powerful enough to make us do that? So you got to start doing it since the beginning or from the beginning, right? You got to start doing your research. You got to understand who your target audience is. What are they? What do they like? What do they not like? And, and, and understand what the description of these people is, right? There's a lovely quote from Seth Godin that says, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. That's why it's so important to understand who your target audience is. If you have a quality product, you might be thinking, well, I just have something that is worth having. Why people don't buy it, right? And that's not enough. You can have the most incredible product, but if you don't have a, a value proposition to those people, a story that connects them to that product, they're just simply not going to care, even though it's, it is a or it might be an incredible product. You now, what do they want when they are going out there to purchase your product, right? Because people don't just buy things. They buy that ultimate outcome that that product might bring them, right? Let's take, for example, the Rolex. People don't buy Rolex just for the sake of having a Rolex. They have a desire for status, right? That's what they ultimately are looking for. People don't buy weight loss. They buy feeling confident or people don't buy a trip. They just buy feeling relaxed, just leaning on a chair on a beach, right? So who are they? You got to define these simple things. Who are they? What is driving their purchase decision? And what are their pain points? Even how can your product solve their problems because they might be having a desired outcome that your product may bridge between where they are right now and where they want to be after they purchase your product. And, and these things might sound trivial, right? Where should I start collecting this type of information? Well, you got to do the research by going into your competition or even your product, analyzing the reviews, what people are saying about your product, what do they like? what they not like, analyzing the competition as well. And not only the reviews, but also the images or maybe running polls, understanding marketing data from studies, understanding open opportunities. What are the stories that are out there for me to tell? What piece of the pie can I take from the market and that is open for me up to grab right now? Yeah, Jose. So I think honestly, this is probably the first critical thing that a lot of Amazon sellers specifically get wrong. You know, one of the luxuries we have as Amazon sellers is there's tons of tools, right? Helium 10, you can understand, you know, how much people are buying the keywords rankings. There's all kinds of things that you just don't get in a traditional retail environment. But because of that, I think historically, especially a lot of Amazon sellers have started with the data first. It's not even about the customer at all. It's like somebody might buy it because, you know, this many people are typing in this keyword. But I think when you flip the script and you start with the customer first and you deeply understand who they are as human beings, all those drives and things that you talked about, and then you match it later on with the Amazon data, I think that's where things get special. So I think it's really interesting and powerful that you brought that up. And I think it's a critical change in the future of Amazon, which is starting with the customer first. Yeah, super important. And it's usually an opportunity that a lot of sellers miss just because it seems trivial. And I get it. There's a lot of designers, brand agencies that talk a lot of fluff about branding and they just don't define it in actionable steps. But when we break it down into going out there and analyzing your competition, and even if you're online right now, your product is online, you can go into the reviews and understanding, huh, going into that three-star, two-star reviews and understanding why they didn't like your product or even to the four or five-star reviews and understanding why did they like so much? Because sometimes it can be feedback about the quality of the product, but they might drop a little bit of value in there. He probably a seller or, or, or probably a customer that says, well, my daughter loved this because of this and that. You might start picking on those things and understand where your story should be focused on. If it's uh, specific points like that or things that you might not be seeing too, because there's a lot of people who don't comment that kind of stuff. But when you start, I think, connecting the dots, you can find all those different things that can strengthen your story when you start crafting it. That leads us to point number two, which is crafting your story. Understanding why does your brand exist? Why is it important that people hear about your brand and what you have to say? Why should others care at all? If, if they go to the competition, 
is there a difference between your product and your competition besides the value of having a, a high quality product? Like I was saying just a moment ago, it's not enough to have a high quality product. It's not enough to just bring value in terms of like the quality of your materials. You have to connect with people. There's a lot of products out there that are uh, less quality than yours, but they're connecting better with people just because they have a stronger story than you. So understanding also what kind of experience are you creating? Are you just providing something for people or are you creating emotions behind that brand? And I know this sounds mystical, but I'm going to show you an example of how there, there's a difference between just selling features and selling the benefit of having your product. So let's say you have a candle brand, right? You, you want to go out in the market and you want to put out the best candle brand that you want. You, you got the best scent, you got the best jar, you got the best cloud, the best packaging, and then you start selling your product, right? The first thing that you are probably going to do is just sell the feature. You're gonna say, this aroma is amazing. People are gonna just flip when they get to smell the aroma that I just put in my candle, right? But this is the wrong focus because you don't wanna sell features. You wanna sell what is it that your product brings to people when they have it. Once they made that purchase, it's not about the smell, it's what the smell creates around that. Now, let me be more clear about this. You got to sell the story. Let's say instead of selling the feature, you start selling what it feels like to be with your loved one while having one of those candles on. All of a sudden, the moment is about what you created, the scene that you just created with the scent, this essence of being together is not anymore about your brand and about you, but it's about them. What do you create for people, right? So... According to a Harvard studies, emotions drive purchase decision by 89%. This is super powerful. And you experience that on the daily. You just don't notice, right? The, maybe you have an iPhone and, and you don't even know why you bought an iPhone instead of an Android. But you all of a sudden, you feel more creative when opening up that iPhone notes instead of the Android notes, right? And it happens with the MacBook too. I'm a designer and I feel more creative when I have a MacBook, for example. It sounds silly, but those things are the ones who enable us to purchase something compared to other products that don't connect as well as the ones that we purchased. The first step that you have to do by starting to tell that story or the next step would be creating a visual identity that backs up that story. You're going to use fonts, you're going to use icons, you're going to use things like photography styles and color palette. Also, graphic effects is really good. Now, you don't only use this kind of stuff just to tell your story, but also for people to understand who you are and recognize you on the shelf, whether it is a search bar or a search result, or if you are a physical store and you have products on a shelf that they might pick you up instead of the other product. How do we do this? Well, we gather all these things and we kind of analyze what the story means and try to link it to a visual story, whether it is with colors, if it's a uh, more sweet and more calm brand, we kind of use uh, pastel colors or more cream colors, for example. You can do multiple things with this. Also, there's, there's many brands that disrupt the space with things that you wouldn't expect, and that makes them unique too. It all depends on your branding strategy. We can use many many different things to represent your core values, right? We have done this with brands like Apollo, where we decided to build some icons, stickers, things that will make you feel, this is a skateboard brand, make you feel rebellious, things that will make you feel disruptive on the space that you are on the skate park and you feel like people understand who you are because you have stickers from Apollo pasted on your uh, back of your skateboard, right? This is the kind of brand that we want to achieve, that people bring their personalities out with the things that we sell. And we do this on the daily with design boards. This is a great start for sellers. So if you have a business and you're thinking about rebranding or doing graphic design, you can hire a designer and give them directions into making a design board to collect all those things that I just listed before and make a design board that looks like the thing that you want to have visually for your brand. We can have multiple examples like if you want your brand to look more elegant and represented by one bright color, but then more muted colors for the background, you can do that as well. Or you can be more, for example, this brand was a construction brand. If you want to do it more like a construction vibe or um, more serious, you can do more 
dark colors with an accent on yellow and also like more stretched out typography or fonts. It depends on what you want to say. Or you can also have the approach of minimalism and you can tell the story in a more calmly way. These are all things that we can do visually to tell the story as well and be recognizable. Now, what should we do with all this? We should bring it all together. And that leads us to differentiating how do we bring it all together when being on an e-commerce compared to traditional branding, right? Because there's a difference. Usually people understand this in the same way, but they're, they're different levels, right? Traditional has physical store, printed media, um, billboards, things that were used much more before. And in the e-commerce space, we everything is digital, right? The search feed is like your shelf. You are competing for customers that are not necessarily your own. So you need to be more bold about the story that you tell. So people can recognize you later on when they're purchasing again, right? So the difference is probably uh, having a more digital space. And there's a lot of places where you can take advantage of this. And I'm going to list them in this presentation as well. So you can understand what opportunities you have open right now to tell your story. So take advantage of the following channels. The first one and the most obvious one is the listing image, right? The listing images that you put online have to tell a story and they have to tell it in a concise and summarized way because people don't have a lot of time to go through listing images. Usually what people do when shopping online is that they're taking care of their kids. They have probably 10 minutes to just look for something that they thought and they had an idea that they needed and they're browsing online, you're competing for attention. That's why you have to tell your story in a simple but bold way. So it's recognizable enough for them to understand that there's something different about your brand, right? And we do this with multiple brands as well. We understand that they have to be differentiated. All these brands that you see right here with did as well, the graphic design, and you understand that they're all representing something different, either because of the way that we display the images, the way that we pick the colors, the typographies, the icons, you can understand that they represent a different story when you see the visuals, right? Storefront is another thing that you want to take advantage of. And Amazon, especially when people go into your storefront, something that you definitely want to have branded, whether it is with video, with banners, there's a lot of things that you can do here. Amazon is really flexible in terms of using their templates and utilizing it to make new opportunities in terms of designs and the way that you display things. You gotta display them clear enough so people understand the different categories, but also utilize that space to tell your story bit by bit, right? Don't make it too overwhelming, but make it super digestible so people can still find their way throughout your catalog. The other thing that you, definitely want to take advantage of is the unboxing experience. Now, I understand that sellers sometimes have a limited budget, so it's not something that is incredibly vital for you to exist on Amazon. But if you have the opportunity to take advantage of the unboxing experience, please do. There's a brand that we worked on. It's called Mooney Moo, and we designed the packaging and we designed some inlays and stickers that come in that product packaging. So the way that we designed the box, we put some funny phrases that were very relatable to parents. This was a baby pouch where you could put all the vital information of your baby in that pouch and photography. And when you visit the doctor, the echo, whatever it is, you can put it in there, right? It's the space where your baby's life is gonna exist before it's born. The way that we related to parents, it was to make it about them and not about us, right? We designed some stickers that come in the box that you can put next to the baby when they're born, like when they make incredible stuff happen, like their first step or when they start walking or when they first said their, the when they said their first word, things like this, right? And they it kind of shows that the brand is more about the life of the parent after they purchase the product instead of just selling something for a profit or to make a quick buck, right? We understood that it's something that excites people, right? It's something that makes people happy when they put this thing next to their baby and they take a picture and share it with their friends. Mooney Moo, which is this brand, allow them to make that happen, right? We create happy moments. That was usually the, the phrase that we would use to describe this brand. 
So also the inlays, this kind of stuff can also help you with the listing too. The unboxing experience, you can combine the main images and put all the unboxing material, whether it is inlays, packaging, or whatever you have in there that comes in the box or with the product to describe that there's something else going on with this product that other people don't have, right? That we thought about it and we just didn't put the random standard packaging that other people do, maybe a plastic bag, but we put some thought into this product and we took whatever the client was interested on and merged that with what we thought it was interesting. And Jose, what I love about this stuff too, which is some of the stuff doesn't cost a lot of money, you know, doing an unboxing experience where you flip the lid and there's something that really captivates our attention, changes the emotional experience when you're opening the product. Those little, I'm sure they were cents on the dollar, those little cards, but the social sharing and the social proof that you can get with people that want to actually take pictures of the brand product that they're actually purchasing. So I think a lot of people think that this stuff is expensive or you need to run billboards and ads. It's not that. It's about those little tweaks, those little nuances that change the emotional experience that customers have with your product. Yeah. A hundred percent. And we saw a lot of people, like you were saying, putting reviews on the listing with five stars, four stars, because they found this kind of cards that they could put next to the baby take pictures of just because of that alone. So reviews are incredibly important. And if you're an Amazon seller or you're thinking about selling on Amazon, you probably know this. Reviews are one of the most important things that you uh, have to strive for um, getting in them in, in the business. So just by having a clear branding proposition with the packaging with story that you were telling you don't have to make it very technical this like animal saying things that don't really cost a lot and that you can put in there and tell the story about your brand can help you understand and shape that idea like we were defining before in the presentation shape the idea on people's head what your branding is about what your brand represents and and that is not only about you and what you're trying to achieve with your brand, but it's about the moments that you create for other people. There's a lot of interesting reviews about this. You are free to go on Amazon, look for this brand. There's a lot of people taking pictures of the packaging, which was super rewarding for us as designer and design agency to make it, but also for the seller because he saw the value on it. Sometimes it can be very theoretical to understand the value behind branding. It might not be as measurable as you think it is, but when you see all those things coming up, the reviews and people making comments about that, it makes it all worth it. So the next thing, add creatives. You can get super creative with your branding right here. There's, there's a brand that is uh, very interesting that we worked with, it's called Skin Me. And their value proposition was that there were different brands in terms of for formula. They went and spent a lot of money designing the formula for their products. So they wanted to showcase the engineering without being too tacky, right? Without missing the mark in terms of skincare tends to be a category that is very sophisticated and very minimalistic with the colors, design, whatever it is. So we wanted to display the branding that could showcase what is what it was to put skin me in the lab and come up with that formula right without missing the mark we also came up with this visuals that um have the branding colors but also like the way that the product makes on the floor is like making a statement right this this kind of stuff you don't really put it into words but people perceive it with their minds right it's an attempt of shaping the idea on people's heads and also another iteration for that brand that it was super fun as well combining different colors trying to see and explore what we can push it explore because this also one of the things that's super powerful in branding and also in the e-commerce space you have to iterate you have to try new things and you have to try to push that story in different ways and the more you try the more data you collect on what people like and what people don't like Another thing, video is definitely something that you want to understand better than what you do right now. Putting a lot of video out there and, and video content about your product is going to help you. It's one of the best channels that you have to tell a story, right? You have a sequence, whether you have a dialogue of, or a movement animation about your product, and you can combine it with different things. We have two examples right here. One, it was a walker for elderly people, but we wanted to show uh, a showcase that was a little bit more sleek than the actual walkers 
in the space, right? Not the general approach. And this is how you catch people's attention. You try something different. You not only go to your competition and understand what they're doing, but you understand the open opportunities that nobody's taking advantage of, right? It might seem a little bit off the category, but we can start trying new things. If it doesn't work, you just iterate back to the version that you had previously and you understand what went wrong and you try something new. Now with this skincare brand, we wanted to showcase how the mechanism of the skin uh, product worked. So that's why we make this animation, but I don't want to focus too much on the animation, but the colors and the minimalism around the scene, the way that it moves, all that kind of stuff tells a story too. Even simple stuff like your email signature, like your profile picture, the way that you utilize all those tiny channels that you have, tiny opportunities to tell your story, you can use that too. So as an overview, I want to display the process that um, I just described in the breakdown. You have to do the research as a first step. It's absolutely essential for you to have a strong branding, understanding what people are all about in your target audience, what they like, what they don't like, what they're looking for, the experience that you can create for them. Also crafting your story. What is your brand all about? What people should care about your brand at all. Also defining your visual identity. How do you tell the story to that target audience in a visual way? Utilizing, like I said, copywriting, product visuals, advertising, printed media, unboxing experience, combine all those things. You can shape the idea on people's head of what your branding is all about. And also bringing it all together, right? And all those things that we define from the foundation to your visual story, combine it all together and iterate. Iteration is really important is in testing and trying new things, right? This is the difference between blending in and standing out. Having the same approach as other sellers is something that if you're launching, I understand you can do that strategy to kind of keep up with the competition. And when you get to that level, you should always switch to the mentality of what is the thing that other people are not doing? What are the other opportunities that are open for me to take and to express my story and tell that story about my brand, right? Try to stand out. And you use all these different channels to tell that story. So coming next, we are going to talk about all things 3D, right? 3D is something that usually sellers don't know about or they stay away from because they think it's not going to look realistic enough. 3D is really powerful because you can do things that you can't do with photography or things that will be very expensive in photography, traditional photography, like booking a location, adding new products to your catalog, or even doing assembly pictures if you have a tech product was something that required a lot of engineering to make. Usually with product photography, traditional photography is difficult to showcase. So with 3D, it's one of those advantages that you have is understanding that you can manipulate the product in a digital space and you can invent a lot of things with it. So we're gonna talk about 3D. So it's a very interesting presentation. You might wanna check that out. And then after that, we're gonna understand how to optimize your listing, not only in a visual way, but also in a technical way. What are the things that really make a listing stand out and perform better beyond having a good design? How do we understand what are the things that affect our conversion rates, our click-through rates, even the advertisement, the ads creatives, and when people arrive to your listing, what are they looking for? What, what's the structure on that listing? And even the A plus content as well. We want to define all those things. So if you want to check more, we're Spotlight Studios. This is our website. But thank you so much, Adam, for this opportunity. We're happy to bring value to people. We're usually on LinkedIn talking about all these things. But yeah, happy to be here. Awesome, man. And yeah, we're going to leave all those links down below. All right, guys. So Spotlighted Studio is literally one of the best that I've ever seen, not only in the e-com Amazon space, but in branding in general. And I'm talking about working at Fortune 300 companies where we spent millions and millions and millions with agencies. This is a fraction of that, but I should also just say that this isn't just a Fiverr designer. You know, I think that the old school Amazon was find somebody on Fiverr, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks and you're off to the races. One thing I've learned, especially in this new era of Amazon, is that it can be very expensive to be cheap. So they're one of the best, they're boutique, they're not the cheapest, 
but they're the best. And so they're incredibly busy, but I talked to Jose and they're basically going to open up three spots for folks in the heist community. And I'm telling you, these are going to fill up fast, especially as we roll out the additional videos in the series on their work with 3D, on their work with listing. But if you want to get in the queue, if you want to work with the best in the business, build a visual brand, build the best listings using 3D, hit that link down below. They're going to fill up incredibly fast. But Jose, thanks for this part one of the three-part series. I can't wait to show how mind-boggling 3D is now and what you guys are able to do in the next series. So if you want to hit the subscribe button, if this is your first time here, we're going to roll that series out here in the months ahead. But thanks for part one, Jose. Yeah, absolutely, man. Happy to be here and happy to drop value to people. Things that can help them achieve greater success. Not all the information that you can find out there about Amazon and just how to improve your listing, but also how to improve their brands and their business in general. Yeah, love it, dude.